Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. Welcome to my very first video here on my solo adventure in Croatia. So I am starting the journey here. I drove from Zagreb all the way to this village called Rastoke. This little village is known for its picturesque little town, little waterfalls, and also cats. I'm going to be exploring this entire area over the next two days in central Croatia. So I hope you'll join me. I hope you'll enjoy the video. I'm really excited. So let's go explore. It was also my first time driving a car completely by myself in a brand new country. So far so good. Driving in Croatia is really easy and I want to show you guys my little rental car. Here it is. An Opel Astra. Yep. This is gonna be driving me all around the country for the next few days. It's a nice car. And look where we are. Wow. It took me about an hour and a half to get down here um, from the Zagreb airport. Um, so not too long and not too bad of driving, very safe. And oh my God, this village is amazing. I'm going to show you guys around now. It is just absolutely picturesque and I must say a must stop if you are coming to Plitvice National Park. It's just off the road, very easy to get to. You can park your car and just walk around and it's just gorgeous. We have waterfalls that are coming at the side of these little village homes and it's very, very peaceful. I'm here in March. It's really cold still. Um, so if you're coming <laughs> to enjoy the sunshine, March is not the time of year, but still beautiful, still warmer than Canada, and I am just loving it so far. It is so beautiful here, and I just want to mention that I am shooting this on my phone, and although it does shoot 4K, I don't have a microphone for it, so I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm speaking really loud, but uh, it's just honestly so gorgeous here. So much fun to explore, I definitely recommend it. Let's head up to the car and go to the next place. I just got into the car, warming up, and I look outside and it is snowing here. So I came from Canada to get away from the cold and yeah, I just, I went right into it. <laughs> It'll get warmer as I get down south, but for now we're dealing with snow. It's beautiful, I will say that but uh, it's cold, so definitely if you're here in March, bring your hats, your mittens, your winter jackets, uh, something for your feet because it is still freezing cold. So yeah, I'm gonna try to find somewhere to eat. Let's go do that now. Okay, so this was not part of the plan, but not a lot is open around here. It could be the season, it could be the day. It's only Sunday and a lot of things are closed. So yeah, I'm at the most random restaurant called Restaurant Phoenix and I ordered some of their traditional food, one of which is lamb. It's cooked on a spit and so it's roasted really nice. And then I also got this bean stew, so this thick, rich, creamy bean stew and also some bread. So let's dig in. All right, let's give this bean stew a try first. It's exactly like my home cooking. Like when we have beans at home, it tastes exactly like this. It's just a little less sweet, I would say. It tastes a little bit more like barbecue sauce without the sweetness. Mm, that was super hearty. All right, next step, we've got the lamb that has been roasted on a spit. It smells incredible. Roasted to perfection. Super tender on the outside. A little bit of crispiness on the outside. Mm. A 
amazing. This is really famous. In this entire area, you'll see people barbecuing um, lamb and also pig on a spit. Unfortunately, it's done for the day, but we still have a ton of meat left in the kitchen and it is incredible. Mm, really good. Just look at how juicy that lamb meat is. I am absolutely loving this. This is one portion and it's huge. It's mouth watering. Oh my god. So we're actually inside this bean stew is a piece of meat. What kind of meat is it? I'm not sure yet. Let's try it out. Mm. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, but I think it's, this is a pure pork. Mm. Pure pork? Or dried? I'm not sure I'll ask. Excuse me. What is the meat inside? This is a homemade pork. Oh, homemade pork. Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. It's like dried? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, yes. perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's a dried pork, actually. It's really good. Mm. Kind of like jerky. All right, the pièce de résistance. Look at that roasted piece of skin. Give it a try. Mm. <laughs> Carb. It's a little more tough than I had envisioned, but well, there's like a layer of fat underneath that skin. And it just melts in your mouth. Oh my god. A lot of flavors coming from that roasted piece of skin, but that fat underneath. So good. Okay, so I have my meal, my coffee to go, just a probably like a double espresso from what it looks like. And uh Moving on, I'm gonna check into my guest house now and check out the area, see what there is to do. I have to say that lamb was insanely good. Super tender, super juicy, really salty on some of the bites, um, but overall really good. The bean stew was okay, um, but the lamb is definitely the highlight here and I wish I could have come when they still had the lamb on the spit. So yeah, let's get in the car. Let's head to the guest house. All right, guys, so I have arrived at the guest house that I'm staying at called Guest House Rubkik or Rubshik. I don't know what the pronunciation is, but I'll leave all the information down below. It is a very convenient location. It is not very far away from the national park, so it makes it really easy to kind of come here, stay here, and get to the national park early in the morning, which is what you're going to want to do. So let me show you around, give you a little tour of this place. So first, we've got the little kitchenette. It's got everything you need. Uh, just to have coffee or tea, uh, heat something up. Little kitchenette here with burners. And then we've got the table, pretty big, big enough for four people. And then over here, you have the queen size bed and also a single bed and a chair over here. And we've got the bathroom. Hey, everything you need, shower, toilet the floors are even heated very very nice the bed is very comfortable and then over here i want to show you guys the view we are in the countryside and you can definitely tell when you step outside on the balcony just look at that super rural countryside these are all farmland we are off a main road but doesn't take away from the feeling of being out in the countryside and snow on the ground. Oh, it's so cold. So yeah, I'm going to sit down for a little bit, catch up on some work, and then make a plan for the rest of the day. Outside roaming around the guest house and I honestly can't believe how snowy it is. It's beautiful. I love it. It's like minus one so it's really quite pleasant. Wow. 
It's about five in the afternoon. It's just starting to get dark. It's still snowing a bit. Um, I'm a little bit frustrated because I went to a restaurant that I wanted to film at tomorrow. Um, I went to scope it out and ask permission for tomorrow if I could film this traditional dish that they're making. And they won't serve one person. <laughs> they like refused. And I even asked if I could buy two, but that was a little outrageous. It's super expensive. Darn, I have to improvise. So I did a little snack haul. And it's not much, but for the National Park tomorrow, it's enough snacks. So I've got some burek there, cliff bars, chocolate bars, uh, instant coffee, clementines, some smoothies, and a uh, noodle bowl just for emergency. So it's not traditional food, but there's nothing I can do. Um, that is one of the downfalls of solo traveling is sometimes you just won't get served at a restaurant. Um, but no biggie. Tomorrow I'll pick back up bright and early and we'll head to the National Park. Good morning. It is so cold. There's so much snow on the ground and it is time to go to the National Park. So let's gear up and let's go. So it's almost 7.30. I have my ticket for 8 a.m. It's minus four outside right now, so it's really cold, especially to be spending the entire day outside. So I packed a ton of snacks. I have hot tea in this bottle, um, mint tea. And yeah, I'm, I'm triple layered with everything. I have a hoodie, I have my jacket, I have two pairs of pants on, and then of course my winter boots, so. Yeah, pretty much ready to be outside all day long. And of course, I've got gloves somewhere too. Yeah, you have to be geared up if you wanna go out. It's like the whole area is just covered in snow, which I did not expect. But yeah, here we go. This is definitely not what I expected, but that's okay. I don't have a snow brush, so I'm kind of just doing this with my glove. <laughs> Okay, not bad for just doing it with my hand. Okay guys, so I made it to the National Park. It was probably a 15 minute drive from the accommodation that I'm staying at. And now I'm in the parking lot and just kind of following the trail to the entrance. I purchased my tickets three days ago. You're supposed to buy them at least one day in advance online um, because there are a certain amount of spots uh, available to get in every hour. So it's best to reserve it in advance. Um, and yeah, I'm just following the trail now. I'm gonna go to the ticket counter, get in, and then show you guys around. I'm super excited. It is beautiful outside. All right, so no one was at the ticket counter, but a guy followed me in and he checked my ticket and he said, yep, you're good to go. So today I'm coming in, it's super snowy. I, I love it, it's amazing. And I'm following Trail C, which should take me around the majority of the park, starting at entrance one, which I think is the only one open right now during COVID. So as you can see, there's lots of signs. Um, this is a well-marked national park, so stay on the trail and you're gonna be fine. So yeah, Trail C, let's go. Not so easy to do by myself. <laughs> want to say that I feel so incredibly lucky right now to be here. Um, it snowed last night and it's just making everything so magical and not a single person is here. I think one due to COVID and then the second one being that it is really snowy outside but I can't believe this. I, I just feel really happy right now. It is so incredibly beautiful and I am so lucky to be here. Wow. We're gonna continue following Trail C, but first we have to go to the big waterfall. Let's go. I can't believe I'm the only person in the 
this entire park. I think I actually am. There's not even footprints here anymore. This is so insane. I hope you can see the waterfall behind me. So a little bit about this national park. This national park has over 90 waterfalls and 16 different lakes. And this waterfall behind me is called the Great Waterfall and it is the tallest waterfall in all of Croatia. And it's just absolutely incredible with the snow as the backdrop. I love it. So let's leave the Great Waterfall and just keep exploring this beautiful national park. to tell you guys how overwhelmingly peaceful it is out here. Just walking around in silence and all you can hear is the waterfalls and then you'll get you're like moving up tiers of lakes and the waterfalls are kind of cascading down but in between the waterfalls there's just silence and birds chirping and yeah I can't even begin to tell you how peaceful it is. I definitely recommend coming here, even if it is by yourself, and just enjoying the nature. Yeah, I'm really happy. Okay, so it's 9 a.m. It's one hour in to the hike. I've gotten about halfway, or maybe a little less than halfway up the lakes. It's pretty difficult terrain right now. Uh, if you don't have boots, you're gonna be slipping and sliding everywhere, even with boots. It's a little difficult, so I am stopping to have tea. It's good to have hot liquids when you're out here in the cold all day because you can get really chilled to the bone if you don't have something hot to warm you from the inside out. Ah, there was mint tea at the guest house, so I boiled some up, put it in my hydro flask, and it stays literally boiling hot. Oh, it burns. Whatever. Let's carry on. So guys, I'm continuing on trail C and now there's no footprints at all, except for a tiny little animal that was hopping around. Am I gonna make it out alive? I don't know. We'll find out. So I'm just at the cafe that's right next to the ferry station, the first one on Trail C. Um, the cafe's open, they have a fire going, and they told me that the boat comes every hour on the hour, so 9, 10, 11. So I had about 45 minutes to wait, so I'm just having my cliff bar now and another cup of coffee for the day because we still have a long way to go. Okay, I'm on the ferry now. It's gonna take me to another side of the lake. And, oh my gosh, it is absolutely beautiful.
the boat and we're moving right along. It's snowing still a little bit but the sun's starting to peek out and just being on the lake now. Different from being on the path where you're kind of going alongside the lakes. Now we're right in the middle. This lake is massive. Just really enjoying this a lot. And I'm the only one here. <laughs> I've got the whole park to myself. It's crazy. Come in March if this is what you want. online so I just spoke to the guy in the cafe and he told me that this is taking the the boat that I just took took me to P1 or P2 P1 P2 yeah P2 and then I follow this trail for a little bit and after a while there will be a train and then I get on the train Go this way. Okay, guys, so I was quite confused um, with the map. So I was speaking with the guy over here at P3. I started here and made my way all across to here. We just took the boat all the way across this massive lake, and then instead of going to P2, we are here at P1, and that's because right now, this time of year, or because of COVID, all of these lakes are closed. So, from P1, I'm gonna follow to Station 2, and then I think here is where the train is. So, we'll get here and see where that takes us. Okay, so, that ended up being a tram car. Like, it's called a panoramic vehicle and it kind of just rips through the park. It's got like these big windows, but he was going so fast. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just kind of nearing the end. Um, this trail, station two, took me to station one. And then there's this trail that leads you all the way back to entrance one. So that's what's open right now. And then, the upper lakes will kind of open uh, in the springtime. So yeah, I'd honestly go around again if I could. I, I would do that all over again today. It was just so beautiful. So yeah, I'm heading down now and I'll catch up at the entrance again. Okay guys, so I'm back at the car. It is 11.19, so that took me three hours and 19 minutes, and that includes the waits for the boat and the tram ride, and God, absolutely gorgeous. Really loved that experience. All of the lakes, you walk up them, and then you come all the way down, and then there's just waterfalls everywhere in between, so absolutely gorgeous. Really recommend coming in the winter because you get snow, uh, nobody's here. Actually, people are here now, so 8 a.m. was like the perfect time. I actually had the park completely to myself. I didn't see anybody until I got on the tram ride. So yeah, 8 a.m., perfect time to come. And yeah, thanks. thank you guys for coming on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I am gonna make more uh, as I go through the country, so definitely stay tuned for that. And yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.